Welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will, and I heard the intro song on the first try. Sweet. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Mm. How you doing, Kev? I was doing great until you made that comment. Well, hey, man. Um, I'm just, I'm <laughs> proud of you. We got it on the first try. I'm going to mess up my mic. Yeah, there, cool, we there we go. Um, yes, guys, it's welcome. Just uh, Will, I'm doing great. Mm. Good, man. I am also doing great. Good. G R E A T. That's oftentimes how, how you it's spell spelled. that word. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's different, but it's a different kind of great. Exactly. Like when uh, there's a sewer nearby, but you mm. want to block it off from small things falling inside of it. Right. Children, apples, you know, stuff. Mainly children. Um, uh, there's also the G R eight number eight. Uh, but is, that's a whole new language. For that's not a word. Only, only you guys will get that. That's not a word. That's the yeah. I, I refuse. I refuse to believe it's a word, but some people think that it is. Did you ever have a friend who in middle school mm. had a username Skater Boy or something like that? S K eight er. Yeah. Oh was, yeah. Was it you? No. It wasn't okay. Me. Good. 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 <laughs> good. Good. I'm but, judging you. If that yeah, was you your, know, a hundred percent. I knew multiple <laughs> people that way. Tyler might have been that way. Ah, uh, that would not surprise me in the least. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tyler. Tyler, oh, if you listen to this, I know you're not, but if you listen to this, you know. There's not much to do in Alaska. Buddy. I mean, you might as well. Yeah. You know? We played Rocket League the other day Whoop. on uh, PS4. Um, speaking of playing games, mm. we're rambling. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a gentleman, uh-huh. uh, I believe it was Chaos on Instagram, Okay. who would like to play a commander game with us. Um, deal. All right, cool. I told him Sold. I would talk to you about it. Okay. And so I now have okay. chaos. If you watch this yeah. happening, I think yeah. it was chaos. Let me, let me double check. This will be safe. I don't want to be talking about the wrong person. Okay. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is important. Right. I want to make sure that this actually happens and everybody loves us. Kevin, nobody loves us. Yeah, it was uh, chaos. Oh, good. FGG Except chaos. for chaos. Chaos loves us. <laughs> no, That's but true. yeah, we'll play a game. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll get our butts kicked. It'll be a good time. It will be awesome. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. Welcome, finally. We're like almost three minutes in, but welcome to this silly rambly video uh, of us talking about nerdy things. It's a podcast, sir. Some of them aren't video watcher listeners. If you're listening on the podcast app or on SoundCloud, welcome as well. That's why I say... You've been listening to us for three minutes now. Watching or listening, yeah, doing it yeah. however you're doing it, where you are well, doing it. We're three minutes in. You didn't say it until just now. No, I said it at the beginning. You'll edit it. You'll I see. I didn't listen to you. Anyway, know. guys, welcome. <laughs> this is going to be a fun episode. Um, oh, gravy. Uh, so the schedule for today, basically, we have a fairly streamlined episode for you this time. Uh, we do have a giveaway that we want to mention uh, with Red Wing Alters yeah. on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, I highly, highly suggest it. If you follow us and her... Uh, and then repost the post with hashtag Red Wing Giveaway. You'll be entered to win a free random altar. Not random, excuse me. Your choice of an altar from Rivals of Ixalan. And she will hand make that for you uh, and ship it out for you. So, again, working with her, make sure you sign up for it's that. It's exciting. It's exciting. Talented. Altars are sweet. Uh, it's kind of... Yeah. She does a fantastic job, too. Um, she does. It's just going to be a... A cool time. It is, yeah. We want to feature <laughs> some talented and awesome people in the community, so this is our first way of doing that. Uh, also, we do have, of course, our random card of the day, and then we'll go into our main topic, which was the latest Pro Tour uh, event, and then we have our question of the week, and then, of course, our crack of packs which are actually in packs. Um, so, without uh, further ado, let's get started with the random card of the day. Yeah, Three, bring it two, on. One. What? <laughs> Sakiko, mother of summer. Uh, she is a 3-3 three, three for 6 what? legendary creature, Snake Shaman. Wow. Oh, yeah. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, add that much green mana to your mana pool until end of turn. Mm. This mana doesn't empty from, ma- from your mana pool. Doesn't as cause mana burn. And phases end. That's cool. Um, this seems great in Commander. Yeah, it um, seems fine. Um. As, like, a casual commander, because Omnath would be better, right? Well, Omnath definitely, as a commander, would be better. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this could probably fit in Omnath's deck if it's, yeah. like, a punchier kind of more aggressive deck. Stompy kind of thing. Yeah, which, I mean, it's mono green. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but I've seen some decks that aren't that have like very few win cons and just yeah. a bunch of ways to find them, get them out quick, and make them big. Yeah. But if it's a more a lower to the ground, a bunch of little creatures, I mean, this seems fine. Also, I will let it be known. I've known some people who want to make Snake Tribal a thing. Uh, so if you're into that, this works. Uh, this is from Betrayers, where in the in Commander snakes were a big Snake, thing. Oh like, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Oh yeah. Hey, if there's a niche for you, yeah, it's exactly. worth noting. It's legal basically everywhere, but standard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not playable anywhere outside no. of that. <laughs> no. I don't think. I don't even necessarily yeah. think it would have been very good in a limited environment at the time. Because I don't it doesn't, either. It's a three three, right? Like the ability is powerful, but it's a three three. Like, well, it's not the three three doesn't bug me. It's that it's really? it costs six. Oh well, that's what I'm in tandem with the six casting. Okay, cost, a three three is like super bad. Because here's the like, thing. So, this is your bomb. Yeah. Basically, I mean, it'll help you get to bigger cards quicker, I guess. But it is but for weird six in your curve. Mana, you exactly. want to have some powerhouse on the field. And while this exactly. is a powerful ability, its its stats are just so low. You could do something cute where you play this turn 6, mm. swing in with a bunch of stuff and then play another bomb. That's not a bad idea, man. Yeah. But Even it's then... only Oh no, okay, so it is by damage. So if you deal 7 damage, you get 7 green. I don't hate it. I don't think it's good still. It's just I, I relying think, on too much, I think. I mean... Because you have to have the other card in your... I mean, you don't, but like to really impact the board at six mana, this just doesn't seem to do it for I me. I mean, unless you just get to dump two other little guys. I don't know. I'm kind of liking it more. Um, I think it... As your bomb, you do need another, like, more aggressive bomb. A yeah. much more... In uh, tandem with this yeah. to really make it shine. I think. I think so, but even so, if you just go, just get a bunch of bears, yeah, bunch of three threes, three fours, just some stompy dudes, <laughs> and just power them out. I mean, I don't know. I don't hate it. Uh, it's okay. Um, in it's limited. Worth noting, I don't hate it in limited. It's worth noting it is two dollars and thirty cents, which is not expensive. So you can pick these up for pretty cheap, and yeah. I would recommend. Uh, Commander is the best place to play. Oh yeah, oh for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I, and I, I imagine it does see a little bit of play in Commander. But I don't know. Limited. I'm on the fence. I'm kind of leaning towards no. But I think maybe you're leaning. The no, other I way, think but... yeah. I think it's possible. I don't think you bank on this card winning you the game. No. Um, dies to bolt, <laughs> which would suck. So true. But it's limited. So yes. Um. Anywho, interesting card though for sure. Definitely. Uh, happy to see that. I love Betrayers. By the way, that's an awesome. I'll, really, a whole block is that whole block is fantastic. So. I lost. No, nope. got. It. Sorry, we're gonna play a game later. I need the paper. All right. Well. Okay. Will you wrote this episode for the well, most part? Yes, sort you of. You wrote the PT stuff. So why don't you go through, take us through the latest Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan? Guys, it was sweet. They <laughs> just wrapped up limited play. I think Sunday or Monday, as of this week if I'm not mistaken. So that all went down, but I didn't touch that at all because <laughs> it's limited. And because our our great and wonderful, uh, I won't say friends, we don't know them, but MTG Goldfish put out their yeah. fantastic, as always, numbers yeah. article about the uh, about the Pro Tour. So that, in tandem with MTG Top 8, I was able to dig, just spelunk, dive, <laughs> sift, Okay, sorry. Your thing wasn't lined up. I got scared. I haven't been talking. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, get in there. Really get in into the grit. And uh, it was a modern event, so awesome. Yeah, you know, modern being one we of were, the most fun formats to watch. I we think. were talking about we should cover modern a little bit more, just talk mm-hmm. about how it's doing. And I internally, I don't know if we spoke about it, but I thought we should just talk about the meta right now because the meta's kind of in a weird spot um, where pros were saying, like, um, I, each, each a bunch of pros were saying, "All right, this is the next deck." No, this is the next. Yeah. No, this is the next deck. So it was cool to see it finally like reach culminate and see yeah. what actually happened. That's the word. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. Kevin, you know the winning deck. Tell the people what the winning deck was, guys. It was Lantern Control. Lantern I'm so happy. Control One. I'm the pro so tour. Happy. Everybody uh, cringed a little bit when I said that, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm so happy that Lantern won. Yeah, you would be. Uh, I love Lantern, man. Piloted so cool. by, uh, if I say your name wrong, forgive me, Luis Salvato. I believe that's Salvato? correct. I did watch Salvato? part of the final match, and it was pretty sweet. Yeah. 
Um, he has been like a mainstay at the Pro Tour for a while. He started back in Innistrad and had some really good finishes then. Uh, so it's cool to see him actually win. I believe yeah, yeah. this is his first. Good for him. That's great. He first. played extraordinarily well. He locked mm -hmm. out the game. The first two games are what I saw, yep. and he locked them out handily. He played very, very well. Very uh, crisp. Yeah, I mean, I his say. his deck is interesting. Um, we see uh, some new cards being added. War of Invention is yes. the big one, uh, and Love people started playing around with this a few months ago before the tournament. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and it's, we see it works out really well. Obviously, you fetched some artifacts. <laughs> Dope. Um, but his deck differs in a little creative way that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Because, as we know, Lantern Control suffers game two. Post sideboard, yeah. it gets far worse. Mm -hmm. However, this deck is pretty sweet because it adds three cards that I love. Uh, Leyline of Sanctity gives you hexproof. No yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Uh, search for Azkanta. This is quite interesting. New card. Yeah, Fantastic new card. New card. Um, it just helps you sift through the deck even more. It's mm -hmm. a cheap way to do it. Costs far less than War of Invention. It's not a uh, tutor like right. they were, of course. Right. It, you just look at the top four. And then Tezzeret. Uh, yes. The Agent of Bolas. Yes, that one specifically. Um, again, kind of like the Search for Azkanta just looks you, lets you look through your deck. Yep. Um, so he was able to create engines to find his pieces much quicker, which I think led you know, to yeah. great success, obviously. I mean, yeah, yeah. we're in a job. Uh, <laughs> so he allowed himself just to be a little bit more uh, fluid, mm -hmm. as well as adding the potential to be aggressive with Tezzeret, even though I don't think that's what you do. Because no. if you can lock out the game, why do you need to swing, man? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so yeah, great job. Mm -hmm. Great job for him. Um, the next round of bannings, by the way, is scheduled for the 12th of this month. Yes. Uh, people are talking about dipping, like pulling down Lantern Control, banning some things. I don't think How it's do you feel good about enough that? to be banned. Uh, personally, yeah. I mean, yeah, it won a Pro Tour. That's awesome, and I'm stoked about it, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it amazing. It was the only Lantern mm -hmm. deck in the top eight. Um, yep. And yes, the deck got better recently with Search, and mm -hmm. running Tezzeret now seems to really, really help the deck, but... I don't think that that makes it broken. I think no. Wur helps it as well because it makes it a little bit more consistent. Right, but it still right. is a little too expensive to Wur and still really lock out the game because ideally by the time you play Wur, you would have already wanted to have the lock. And sure. so like, I, I, don't, I think it's good. It's definitely better, but I don't think it's bannable. Right. I don't either, um, but we will see. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised just it, because it isn't a fun quote unquote deck. God, no, it's really it's not. Very it's really not to play against. Um no, sure. but I mean it does have some poor matchups and yeah. you know it has won this pro tour and it's been in several top eights been recently. Top eights, yeah. But you can't say any more than any other deck. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um but this uh Salvato played against Jerry Thompson. Uh he's been a mainstay in the magic mm -hmm. community forever. And he played a deck that I really, really, really like. I think we both really liked this deck because the we've talked about it before. Marty Pyromancer? Yeah. Yeah. It's sweet. It's a sweet deck. It's really fun. Um and it's a fairly new deck. Yeah. It it's really become popular around the same time as Lantern got its got yeah. its changes. Probably a little bit older than that, actually. Probably. It got tinkered with, but it fell. <laughs> Tinker. It's not modern legal. Um <laughs> Uh, Could you imagine? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Affinity everywhere. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Uh, this deck is fantastic. It's exactly the things that I love. It's go wide with efficient cheap creatures. Yeah. It's got Bedlam Reveler in there to have a big scary thing. Which I love that card. Right. Can I just take a moment to say Bedlam Reveler? Shout out to you. It's fun. Friend. You're amazing. <laughs> like, that card's amazing. It's so fun. Um profits off you playing answers spells that gives you things mm -hmm. uh this deck is just fun uh it runs lingering souls yeah lingering souls is great uh there's not a lot not to like about the deck it did not do well in the tournament overall of right. the people that played it it was did not do like it didn't do well at all yeah. in the hands of jerry thompson a uh, seasoned, seasoned professional jinx that was what? weird <laughs> uh, 80 things are happening <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I was going to say, never mind. Nah, family friendly. Uh, yeah, in the hands of a seasoned professional, this deck really did shine. Yeah. Um, this is interesting, though. It runs so many removal spells. I didn't yes, even, it does. I didn't even, it's insane. I didn't write down hand destruction spells, but it has about eight of those as well, main board, yeah. I think. Eight or six. Um, but 
Here are all the removal spells. Main board. One Lily, a Dread Boar, two Collective Brutality, which I know there are different modes for Collective yeah, Brutality, but potentially. But that's the beauty of right. Collective Brutality. <laughs> exactly. Four Bolts, two Fatal Push, one Terminate, and three Colagons Command again. Yeah. But still. And then sideboard, two more Collective Brutalities, another Liliana, and an Anger of the Gods. Can I point out something that I find a little interesting? Of course. I think it's very interesting that they he chose to run four bolts and two fatal pushes. Do you think that ratio is a little interesting? Um, it's a curious choice, certainly. Um, I mean, I think that shows his prioritization right. of his deck because he obviously wanted the flexibility of bolt mm -hmm. to be able to just hit the face exactly, directly, which is fantastic. And exactly. I think that's good. And I think that makes this deck strong because it can yep. attack from different angles. That's, yes. Um, however, I do think throwing another fatal push in there might be i don't know that seems a little interesting to me um, i think more decks would have run more fatal push but i think in this deck it shines more for the lightning bolt oh i think bolt is much better in this deck yeah. um because you're getting aggressive quick yeah being able to go for face is fantastic and i guess it does make more sense with the young pyromancer because mm -hmm. if you don't have a creature to target with fatal push that becomes a dead card whereas a bolt becomes bolt to the face plus a one one creature right so there's just value there i guess it right. does make sense it's just i found that a little interesting because fatal push is at a premium right now certainly it certainly is um and fatal push will always have its place yeah. however you also see a lot of tron decks eldrazi tron point. specifically being and and push doesn't hit them yeah uh bolt doesn't really either but, yeah. <laughs> but it's still at <laughs> least it's more useful yeah you know what i mean yeah, i guess it hits matter reshaper push or bolt 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 it yeah it's matter reshaper i guess push can hit thought not seer yeah and it's worth noting if you fetch and fatal push you do get the revolt trigger so it's yep. pretty easy to trigger it in modern but sure. like i don't know yeah, yeah they're both kind of bad against them. i guess you'd hit endless one too with push mm. even though that's not really played in tron often not over anymore. other things no um, it's not. regardless uh this deck is sweet it's yeah. quick it's it's controlling just with how many removal answers it's got mm -hmm. um all the hand destruct it reminds me of a really skinny jun deck where <laughs> it doesn't have big threats it none of its creatures get really gigantic it just floods the board with one ones mm -hmm. puts out reveler and goes yeah it's great there was a uh blue red list as well running around with thing in the ice correct yes with thing in the mm -hmm. ice uh similar obviously with more counters opt uh serum visions you know the stuff the blue wants a lot to more make digging deck, yeah yeah to make that deck good um did not finish top eight but still that deck was there. i'm glad the mardu one did i we saw I, I that think it's deck cool. one time recently mm -hmm. and we were like wow that's a really sweet deck yeah. and we found it a little odd because it was so removal heavy but yeah i think this just goes to show how well it can do and i think setup. yeah i think right. it works um cool okay so those are the top two decks the two decks the champions that i wanted to talk about <laughs> i'm gonna talk about the meta for a little bit yeah so the meta got shaken up substantially like anyone could see that mm -hmm. it's great um it's honestly i couldn't talk enough about how cool the meta is right now because no deck no deck was played more than 10 percent of the meta they Good. all fell below Good. nine and a half percent which is sweet yeah. Um, and of that, we obviously the cream rises to the top, um, but not necessarily in the way you'd expect. <laughs> of the best three decks in the tournament, one of them was in the top ten most played. The huh. other two had less than ten participants. Players. Interesting. Yes, we'll talk about it. So, top ten decks okay. were played. Um, I have them by number of decks entered in the tournament. The uh, day one meta of those decks so what percent of the field they were played mm -hmm. players that did not make it to day two so basically players lost from the mm -hmm. deck and then their day two conversion rate now uh mtg goldfish did all this math for me it's on their yeah. website this is not credit them i cannot do this math on my own <laughs> I, I could but i didn't so <laughs> that being said um they go well in depth there check them out if you like reading and getting your teeth into uh, some numbers and whatnot, but we'll briefly go over it here. So Five Color Humans is making a splash. It runs, I think it's like 30 creatures, 32 creatures, and then just four Aether Vial and lands. No spells whatsoever. Uh, the humans serve as their spells. Yeah. You're blanching a little bit. This um, is the no, most, most played knew, deck. I know, I know. I knew that this was going to come up because I looked at the top eight. Oh, yeah. Saw the two that were in the top eight. Mm -hmm. um, I also looked because of our card spotlight. 
Okay. So shameless plug. Go watch our card spotlight. Well, it's coming it's, out. Tomorrow, I was gonna say it's tomorrow. Stay tuned. Watch our card spotlight. It's on a card that was in the deck. Champion of the Parish. Maybe. Yeah. It's Champion of the Parish. I had to guess for myself. Yeah. It's yeah, Champion, it's of, the Champion of the Parish. <laughs> uh, yeah. This deck is very good. Uh, the synergy so is insane. It's cool. Yeah, the yeah. flexibility with Aether Vial to throw in to almost toolbox your creatures out. Yeah. If you need a Reflector Mage. You got Aether Vial, three, Reflector Mage, bounce a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this deck is really, really good. Yeah. Um, I think I think this might be like the next boogeyman in modern. It's it's that good. It beat Death Shadow so much. <laughs> <laughs> Just kicked its butt. Because um, it goes wide, it controls the board with the various ETB effects, mm -hmm. and then its creatures get big because you've got guys like uh, Thalia's Lieutenant or something like that. Mm -hmm pumps other humans pumps itself so all your humans it's just nasty uh yeah that's yeah. pretty sweet, it's sweet. Yeah. Uh, but it's numbers so 43 five color human decks okay. were entered in the tournament uh that's 9.3 percent of the meta that is the highest percent of the meta awesome uh 14 players did not make it to day two which leaves them at a 67.4 percent conversion rate now the average conversion rate was 63 percent so it's above average. Above average, that's yes. That's pretty good. That's good. By, you know, well, 4%. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's solid. Um, the next most highest, highest disc deck played. Uh, Affinity. No wow. surprise. Yeah. Bringing back Affinity. I'm uh, happy to see that. Uh, never really left. I was going <laughs> to say. It's, yeah, never really left. Uh, 37 Affinity decks were played, uh, which is 8% of the meta. Lost 13 players, leaving it at about 64.9% conversion rate so just on average yeah, basically just on a little bit above affinity yeah. still going strong uh, as it always probably will yeah i mean we have plenty of more ways well, like word of invention is played in certain affinity decks sure. now like, sure. more cards will get printed to help it out kaladesh um, aether revolt really helps out oh yeah general, oh yeah so burn uh, of course it being one of the cheapest modern decks to make it's always yeah, going to be a tournament people play first you it's know? cheap it's easy to pilot it's quick uh if you and it's competitive yeah it really is um as told by the numbers 34 decks were entered uh 7.3 percent of the meta that was lost 12 players uh had a 64.7 conversion rate so again just above Gosh. average uh yeah not really mm -hmm. uh just staying strong what can yeah, you say about I mean, burn, it's man? burn man yeah it's burn. uh tron this is not eldrazi tron this is like karn tron and etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera. Uh, 32 decks were entered in the tournament, 6.9% of the meta at 32. 10 players did not make it to day two, hmm. uh, and that leaves it a 68.8% conversion rate, so Pretty well good. above the meta. Yeah, yeah. Um, Grixis Death Shadow. This was the one that I was looking for. I wanted I was to see where to it was. See a lot of this. Um, 30 decks, so hmm. less than Affinity, less than 5-color yeah, yeah. human. Uh, it's kind of taken its back seat because we've figured it out by now, right? It's, it, yeah. it's never been invincible as a deck it's mm -hmm. just been really consistent um 30 decks were entered that's six and a half percent of the meta just about uh 10 players again didn't make it to day two so 66.7 percent so it's still an above Pretty average yeah, deck yeah. in terms of at least this tournament mm -hmm. um but that's honestly what you'd expect what you'd find yeah still above average uh not the champion it once was <laughs> eldrazi tron now he says with a nice flicker of excitement I was really excited. This is my favorite form of Tron um, because it's, it's so good. It's mean, <laughs> and it is so good. Like, so, so good. Yeah. yeah this yeah. tournament kind of proved that. Let me explain why. 26 Eldrazi Tron decks were entered. That's 5.5% of the meta, 5.6, 5.5, mm -hmm. around there. Uh, six players didn't make it to day two, giving it a 76.9% conversion rate. That's real good. Yeah. My gosh, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's real good. Uh, American Control. Hey. He says with a flicker of excitement. <laughs> Similar numbers to Eldrazi Tron. 23 decks were entered. That's 5% of the meta. Six players did not make it until day two. 73.9 conversion rate. Yeah. That's that's crazy good. That is good. Um, I'm not going to say it came out of nowhere. American Control's kind of been it's, on the uptick yeah. lately, uh, but I didn't expect it. I didn't expect one to, to be the one of the most played decks. Two yeah. to do as well as it has. Yeah, sweet. Uh, great job, America. Heck yeah. Uh, this one hurts a little bit, or at least it should hurt you. Storm, 
Oh, God. 23 decks were entered. Yep. That's 5% of the meta. Again. Okay. 10 players did not make it to day oh, two. Oh, no. Leaving it with a 56.5% oh, conversion no. rate. Storm players. Come on, no. Yes. Uh, God, that sucks. We'll take a note. We'll take a little like yeah. sidebar here. Um, combo, in general, at this tournament, fared so poorly. I'm not too surprised. I'm shocked. Are I'm you? talking Counters Company, Storm, Ad Nauseam, all the I big ones. Just clear, I think by this list, there are just faster things out there. And more aggressive things. I mean, you think five color humans, right? The right. synergy there, the build up, and all the ETB effects and things like that just controls things. And then you've got burn, which is always fast. Eldrazi Tron, which is super fast and aggressive. Like, there's just faster decks. Well, yes, but these are decks that these the, the combo decks have beaten, right? Consistently beaten? Storm, yeah. Storm beats... Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked at numbers. Yeah, Storm has a pretty favorable matchup against most, like... Death Shadow, uh, your, what's another one? Regular Tron. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Just mm-hmm. because if it gets his storm off, I mean, yeah, it's optimal. That's fair. Um, but, well, it's not the case. I don't know. And five color, storm five dollars. color humans doesn't really touch. I like, guess it doesn't matter about the ETB effects too mm-hmm. much because there's nothing on the board on the exactly other end. like five Unless color it's humans like doesn't touch storm. ascension. I don't know if that deck still runs around though. Not sure. So, um, yeah, this was gift storm. You mm-hmm. said, yeah, mm-hmm. not good. No. Not good. Um, not That's to say, sad. eh, eh. I'm sad about it. Is it though? I think so. Um, <laughs> I'd rather see a new, a young, fresh face come out and kick some storm butt. too. Storm point two, <laughs> making empty the Warrens great again. <laughs> <laughs> Never will that card be good. Uh, the last, <laughs> last of the top ten decks. Um, blue white control. Twenty three decks, five percent of the meta. Um, nine players didn't make it to day two, giving it a sixty point nine percent conversion rate, less than the average by about three four um, percent. It's a, it's again a cheap deck. Mm-hmm. It's not got. A really scary end game, though. Yeah, and I think that's where American Control has the edge over right. Blue White, right? Right. So yeah, the deck does well. Yeah, not well enough. Uh, even though I really like it. So let's talk about the two decks I did not mention in the top two most played. Okay. One of them cracked the top eight in um, Black Red Hollow One. Oh yeah, I did see that. I love that deck. <laughs> The hollow one deck is kind of sweet. This, y'all, this deck. It's really cool. It's so like, <laughs> how are you good? It, what? It's sort of like, it kind of plays like dredge, but it doesn't dredge. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Dredge also, by the way, did not do well at all in this no, tournament. No, I'm not surprised. I'm gonna throw that out there. It's so easy to just like nerf dredge. Rest in peace. Done. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But um. <laughs> but right this this deck is so so crazy and I didn't think it'd be that good because I saw some lists from MMTG online yeah. uh, and I was like ah eh, how are they doing so well people will figure this deck out before the tournament yeah. no uh, one of the feature matches uh, during the top eight the round of eight I guess you could say uh, a dude turned one two hollow ones uh. Yeah. <laughs> what? Two four fours. Turn Two one. four fours turn one. And what? Just, <laughs> at that point, if you don't know, you can then pick up your cards you've lost. You can shuffle uh, again. You're on to game two. That's how that goes. I resolve my two hollow ones. Uh, do you want to go to sideboard? <laughs> No, that's insane. Yeah. Not only is that insane because you have two four fours on the field, the Gromag Anglers and the Tassigers in this deck jump out on turn two. Yep. Because to play all those hollow ones, you have to have discarded a lot of gas. Yep. Which there are plenty of cyclers, there are plenty of draw three, discard two, which is sweet. Uh if you are holding a any kind of uh What's the effect that gets the cards out of the thing and you put it down. If you're holding any of those two cards, Gromag and Tassiger. Mm. You have the potential there for, what is that, 14 damage? 12 damage. Yeah, 12, 12 damage. Wow. By turn two, you have 12 power on board. It's really good. Okay. Hollow Forgive ones. me if I'm wrong. It also mm. runs Bloodgast. Yes, it does. Which, in addition, makes it that much faster. Yep. 
and it's yeah. recursive, so it's just super consistent. This this deck is like what? I like it. It's I really like so it. fast and so synergistic. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying, terrifying. Uh, along with five color humans, this guy's probably going to be around for a while. This guy's in this deck. This deck is going to be <laughs> around for a little bit um, until we just get better removal. Uh, I don't think there could be a deck that's really like faster than that. It's doing what Death Shadow used to do, but because it's Death Shadow is a uh, four four for six, mm-hmm. it's like way better. Yeah, because Fatal Push doesn't hit it, Bolt doesn't hit it. It's you don't have to hurt yourself to do it. That's my thing is you don't have to suicide kill yourself like just this to make your deck good. Yeah, like, this is crazy. Um, what? I've seen, what? so when Hollow One was first spoiled, I saw a bunch of online gameplay mm. where people were kind of testing it out and like trying it out with cyclers and things like that, but I didn't ever think it was like competitive viable. You know what I mean? See, I didn't either. Um, That's the thing. But I'm so happy that it is because it seriously is a cool deck. It's very fast. Very, very fast. Uh, yeah. Very fast. Very scary. Um, okay. Hollow One out of the way. Mm. Jeez. Uh, it's numbers, by the way. 100% of the decks made it to day two. One, zero, zero. Wow. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, and like <laughs> 60% of them, like 66% of them had winning records before the round of eight, mm. even though they didn't make it, uh, which is like... Really cool. Dang. Um, Madcap Moon is the other one. Yeah. O- only five players played this, but 80% of them, four of them, made it to day two. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that's really good, and it to me, even though it posted some of the best numbers in terms of a deck, in terms of an archetype in the tournament, I don't think like it's just not a deck you plan for, really. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it five players out of four hundred sixty played it, so kind of yeah. clearly you know that's not exactly one that people see a lot. Um, just gets Blood Moon out really quick. Uses Simeon Spirit Guide, Vendillion Click, Madcap this. Experiment. Yeah. is the namesake card and it gets forgive me if i'm wrong platinum imperium is that the card that it goes and like pulls out yeah okay it should and if it does it's I, the big scary if you don't know yeah platinum imperium says your life yeah. total can't change and it's yep. just a giant beater yeah it's and an so, eight eight that doesn't let you die for three mana you're guaranteed to get that is essentially what it amounts right. to with madcap experiments so it's just a really weird deck and then blood moon obviously everybody knows what blood moon is yeah. so. it's i mean it can very quickly get out platinum imperium oh yeah yeah um and if you're not simian spirit guides yeah easy well if you're not planning for it again you just kind of lose to it yeah uh i don't think this deck's gonna be around forever it's uh, too easy to beat right artifact removal kills well the that's the thing is if you're planning on so I don't think it's indestructible. In no, no, I think that the only ability is that your life total can't. Yeah, I was forgetting. Yeah, that's right. So um, like, you can just ancient grudge, and right? That's kind of game. <laughs> yeah, um, blood moon obviously is a hindrance, and that's kind of what it looks to do is mm-hmm. um, play blood moon early to stall to slow you down, and then get out Imperium mm-hmm. or just get it out fast and whatever. Uh, you could turn one the Imperium. Yes. I mean, that's 100% possible mm-hmm. with two Simeon Spirit Guides and a Mountain. Yes. Yes, you Easy can. To do. Um, and it's been done. Yeah. Um, Snapcaster keeps it consistent, yeah, keeps right. it honest. Snapcaster helps it. Gets you the other copy of Imperium, which isn't legendary, I don't think. Again, I forgot Imperium stats. I needed to look at them. I don't think it's legendary. No, it's not. So you could get two. I mean, it's a cool deck. Um, it's, it's a cute deck. It is. It's a kind of tricksy deck. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And to be honest, the Trixie decks like that are always fun. They're cool, but like they don't generally last super long. No. Um, Does that make sense? And <clears throat> it digs a lot, oh, but yeah, it do- yeah. it's not as consistent. It's like... Right? You've got a lot of control. You got a lot of counters, um, a lot of burn. But without those spirit guides without mm. a really fast start either you're looking to either turn one blood moon or turn one uh platinum imperium right if you don't do those your threat is a little bit delayed you've got plenty of like uh control electrolyze yeah yeah ways to like ping and 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 chew on the board a little bit but mm. not 
It all of its things happen. All I'm trying to say is its optimal turn happens at once, and then yeah. if you can beat that, it's got no gas left. Yeah. Whereas decks like five color humans, it's just a wave of things happening. <laughs> yeah. With Hollow One, it's just a wave of things. <laughs> if Hollow One gets more than six cards in the graveyard in one turn, that's really scary. Yeah. Because that's, that's a free scary. that's a free Hollow One. That's a Gromag Angler. That's a bunch of stuff. Mm. Um, and then it's got plenty of removal to hurt <laughs> you as well. So th- this deck is good. Yeah, but it's not gonna. It's not like the boogeyman or anything. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> all right, numbers on decks out of the way. All the grit and grime done. Kevin, you ready to play a little game? I'm a little nervous to play a game. I would like you. Yeah. To, Do I need to write something? No, no. Oh, okay. To give me, actually, yes. Go ahead, write it down. <laughs> to give me the top three cards played in modern right now. Oh, good lord. The top like, three. I don't know that. I'm ass- assuming we're not counting lands. No, 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 no. Okay, no, just no, no, not sure. lands. Because we just got fresh numbers on these. Now that the meta is shaken up, the people want to know. Kev, oh, God. What cards are Dude, I played have most in clue. modern? Um, do, do, do. Yeah, it's going to be. Do, do, do. I don't, Take your time, man. I don't think that's up there. Stall. Stall for me. Stall for you. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Great. Um, you want 40 seconds? No, I'm good. I'm good with 30. All right. Nope, not 30 minutes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Let's double the length of the video. Yeah. All right, Kev. What you thinking? Um, is I'm thinking it, generally good cards. Is it? Is it uh, Gifts Ungiven? No, it's not Gifts. Is it Sakiko Mother of something? <laughs> is it? All right, I don't know. I'm picking these in no particular order. Oh, no, give me an order, dog. Uh, I have to give you an order? Oh, yeah. Then I'll switch these two, and it'll be top down. Top down? Yeah. Do you want me to read them out? Of course. All right. Number. right. We'll go number three first. I'm going to say remand. Okay. Question mark. Um, okay. I'm then going to say in number two, bolt. Okay. Because I think it's coming back a little bit. And then number one, again, trying to stay very vague, I'm saying fatal push. But I don't think that's right. Thought sees or something like that is going to be up higher. Ooh. You're a smart man. Can I say uh, you are 66.7% right in terms of card names? Oh, God. But not their order. Am I really? Yeah. Okay, sweet. The it's better than I thought. We'll go I'm third. With that. We'll go. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> you were 33% correct. Oh, okay. Uh, Serum Visions in number three. Oh, that would make more sense. That right. should have been in place of Remand for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes okay. more sense. All right. Thought Seize at number two. I should see. I knew Thought Seize was gonna be higher. Okay, yeah. yeah, go ahead. And the king of one mana, burn and removal once yes. again is Bolt. It's back. <laughs> Bolt is back. Heck yeah. As the top play deck or top play card in modern, which is sweet. Mm-hmm. At the at this tournament, uh, thirty one point three four percent. Nice. Uh, dominance over the other cards. I don't. I forgot how to word this correctly. And then I cut off the percent of decks. Was Fatal Push and Remand in the top 10? Um, Fatal Push is in the top 5. Okay. Remand, sir? No. No. No surprise. Mm-mm. Path right. is yeah. 4, Snapcaster 6. See, I was thinking Path, but I was like, that can't be in most of the decks. No, you know it's I mean? it's not in most of the decks, but if you run white, yeah, yeah. why not have a Path? That's fair. Because Path is dope. I was wrong. It's okay, man. For the first time in almost 25 years. No, uh, I can confirm that is not the case. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah lightning bolt's back man yeah i'm happy for that i feel comfortable comfortable with a bolt in the meta mm-hmm. here's why it is always a good litmus test for value of creatures oh yeah, yeah. you know I see what you're saying if it dies to bolt it better do something super good yes when it enters the battlefield because it's gone yeah uh you always have an answer for birds of paradise as you know bolt the bird mm-hmm. pathing bird weirdly feels worse to me weirdly maybe it's just yeah. because i'm used to bolt but like pathing bird is not path not path sorry Fatal push pushing? yeah oh even though the same thing happens you don't lose anything pushing bird just feels worse to me and that's my opinion so it can't be wrong <laughs> uh, no the same thing happens um but i just man bolt yeah bolt is great bolt is great all right well sweet guys 
Uh, if you enjoyed this coverage of the Pro Tour, as action packed. Thank uh, MTG Goldfish, not yeah, me. Thank MTG Goldfish for um, me. But if you do have any questions, yes, let us are. know in the comment section. We'll do our best to answer, as we always try to do. Um, we do, of course, now move on to our question of the week. And our question of the week this past week was: What is the sleeper card from River Rivals of Ixalan? Rivers of I- Rickster, Rivers of Ixalan. Rivers, Ixalan. Rivers of Indiana. This is Oregon Trail, the uh, card game. I did not count this up, but I do have a feeling I know which one actually had the most votes. But I will go over this very quickly. Moment of Craving was up there. Uh, Warkite Marauder. Uh, Direfleet okay. Poisoner did get a couple votes, which yeah. is probably collectively our most I think so. voted it's for m- card on that. I, mean, I don't it, know that it's, it's much my opinion. of a sleeper. Because yeah. it's just good. Like <laughs> It's a just good. Yeah. Um, it's a just good. It's a just good. Uh, Deep Root Elite. I'd like to apologize to all our Italian listeners out there. Yeah, for all whatever two that of you. was. There's nobody that's a doubt. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Plotly Radiant Champion is a card I really like. Actually, Do you? I weirdly I really like it. It's in my least two favorite colors. Yeah. Um, it does stuff that I think is good, but stuff I would never want to do in a deck. Exactly. It's just like, like but I, I think it's pretty good. Weirdly, I'm not into it. That's fine. Uh, I think Angrath it's it's too expensive there. just to pump your stuff and yeah. give it more, give it more loyalty. I don't want it. I don't want a planeswalker to just interact with itself. I hope this is the card I'm thinking of. The green white planeswalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes in, you get more loyalty counters, based on like the power of your creature in play or something. It's something like that. I wrote it off because I don't. When it comes in, I don't want it to just do something to itself. I think it draws you cards, though. I don't think it does, mistaken. man. I don't does think it, it does. Yeah, you, right you got a computer right up there. Um, right up there. What the? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, the emblem draws you cards. That's what I was thinking. So for one loyalty, you put a loyalty counter on it for each creature you control. So it gets one plus however many creatures oh, it's, you control. And it's okay. Um, See, I like it even less now. now. Uh. For minus one target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. And minus eight, it's emblem. Uh, whenever you get a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. See, okay. Oddly enough, abs and vampires. I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think this would be worth splashing in that deck. I mean, I love yeah. this card. I think um, I, see, given the right I, deck... You could That's turn a... to her ultimate. Yeah, potentially. Easily. Potentially. Not super easily, but fairly easily. Um, and that's really good. We talked about card advantage, and in these colors, card advantage is super valuable. Yeah. Um, I just don't think it does enough for a Planeswalker, man. I mean, that's I fair. Know. You can have your opinion. I'm not going to fight you. Yeah. I'm I know just... they probably want me to. But I'm not going to do that. That's fine, I respect man. you Thanks. as a human being. Plus, Although Sweltering Suns is still really in the meta. Stupid answer on the question of the week. <laughs> this is a good segue. What do you mean? Uh, sleeper card from Rivals, Mox Opal. Yeah. No one is playing it in standard right now, and I think it's ridiculous. Mox Opal was so good. Anyway, the winner by a long shot, Trapjaw Tyrant, is the one people huh. think is the, yeah. the biggest sleeper, which I do think it's a very powerful card. In mm-hmm. limited, it's fantastic. Um, yep. I think it does have potential for constructed. We'll mm-hmm. see. Um, I have not kept up with standard constructed at all, so I have no clue. I think it's weird as a top end kind of like finish mm-hmm. the game, because mm-hmm. uh, I mean any bomb at the end of the game they're going to want to remove. Oh yeah, um, of course. But definitely trap draw even more just because they mm-hmm. get their stuff back. I don't know. I mean, it's a cool card. I like it a lot. When I did see it mm-hmm. for the first time, I was like, "Wow, that's really good." And I'm fine with I think that. it's so good. I, mean? I think it's so um, good. Yeah. So the next uh, question of the week, though, in regards to this PT, what will be the next breakout modern deck? Obviously, you've heard our opinions a little bit. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. what deck do you think is going to really, really shake up the meta, become the dominant deck? Five color humans. Maybe. I think. It. Hollow one. Uh, Dude, I mean, I want it to be hollow one. But why? I just love it. It's so. Cool. I don't know. I. We've had these like super quick tempo decks for so long yeah. now. I just think it's the new Death Shadow. Like it does the same thing, basically. It does a similar thing for sure. Uh, Ooh, just a little bit better. Yeah, I think so. We do, of course, right. have our crack of packs and All right. our gold cards. Mine is the Primal Tide. I was gonna try to open it. Like it didn't you know. work. 
What's yours? Uh, Galta, the primal hunger, because I need a sweet, sexy dinosaur lady to smush my enemies oh, for guys, me. Oh, guys, I love that art. The game. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. Not a lot of um, Rivals cards made it into the Pro Tour, obviously. I mean, yeah, no surprise. standard. Um, but that Negate did. Yeah. So. Of course it did. People liked. Ooh. Oh, okay. What well, that's my pick. Uh, I didn't get Primal uh, Tide, but I did get Primal Storm, Atali, which is nice. 100% the pick. No question. Uh, I got Mastermind's Acquisition. Not the pick. <laughs> no. Unlimited. <laughs> that ain't what you want to see. <laughs> Oh, we okay. got the Pirate Lord. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> that might send me into Pirates. So. Oh, actually, no, that wouldn't be my first pick. I don't think I know. It's not that. No. Um, Although I do like that card. I don't think it's Hunt the Week, even though not that's first great pick. removal. Not Bombard. Although, you think Bombard's the first pick? It's up there for me, yeah. Wow. That or Luminous wow. Bonds, both of which are good. Luminous Bonds help with the sin, though. Right. That's true. Um, ah, dude. It also leaves you open into multiple decks, so I'd probably take Luminous Bonds. Because oh, you could yeah. go black-white vampires. I might, actually. It's Honestly, it's that or Dire Fleet to me, because it sends me in a direction, even though Bombard is a really... Like, this is probably top three. Yeah, for dude, me. no uh, question. Maybe, I'm with you on that. Maybe that. No, this way, for sure. Oh, that way. Uh, Dire Fleet, Neckbreaker, then Bombard, then Luminous Bonds. Um... I have a direction here. Mm -hmm. That's just solid. I don't love it as first pick, though, um, just because it doesn't give me focus. But I guess your first pick doesn't have to. I was going to say, I don't like getting too focused on my first pick. If it's just value, then hey. It's going to be good and playable. Yeah. Uh, but I do like the Neckbreaker. It's great, obviously, in the Pirate deck. That's what it's for. Um, all of the Lords are first pickable. Yeah. I will just say that. Uh, 100%. Probably. Yeah, I'd say. Um, I did uh, draft Rivals online oh. recently. Delicious. The first time I did, I got sort of thrown into nobody was taking this. I was in blue green merfolk. Wow. Nobody took merfolk. And like, I was so surprised because there was so much stuff going around. I only got one of the lords, which sucks, but I got so many toolbox cards. Yeah. And I got one of the merfolk that lets you pull a merfolk from and put it on top of your deck. I don't sure. remember the name of that cycle, but um, so I just could just the toolbox forerunner. out. Yeah, the forerunners, I believe. So I could just toolbox out whatever merfolk I needed, and I had the one that tapped down all your opponent's creatures, so when I needed the win, I could just have it. Like That's really good. It was good. I 3-0'd the draft. Wow, good job, dude. Yeah, I felt really good. Nice. That's, I think the first time I've 3-0'd an online draft, I don't draft online very often, and I'm yeah. also not very good. <laughs> so, And I will own that. <laughs> just play more, dude. I do need to. Just I play more, to. baby. I did play a second draft where I ended up in like red-white aggro. Okay. And I only won like one game. I yeah. got annihilated. I didn't like that deck very much. It looked okay on the face of it. I ended up with like two or three bombards, but I only played two. Um, cause you know, um, it's just, it was so much. It just wasn't very good. I got flooded a lot, not to like make an excuse, but I did get flooded a good bit. No, go ahead. Um, make an excuse. I mean, I'm not saying it didn't lose me the game We're still. I'm not going to tell you you're bad, Kevin. I am bad. It's oh, fine. Okay. I'm fine with that. You are bad. Um, but yeah. First so. pick always. All right, guys. So with that being said, this is bad. We're going to lose viewers now. <laughs> My raptor companion. He's so only had one toughness. Um, oh. In the arms of Jesus. Oh, wait. No, let me see what was. <laughs> it's great this is a good ending every uh, every year homeless dinosaurs <laughs> die in the cold with your generous picture of a sad dinosaur. with your generous donation of 50 cents on our patreon page you could save raptor companions everywhere hey guys go to our patreon <laughs> <laughs> no um, but really um Dang, um, Kev. Sorry, that was a little uncalled for. I just kind of here you go. You want to get the his his friend? The I song? actually like that card. <laughs> anyway, right. of course you do, <laughs> guys. Thanks for watching this episode of It Resolves. We made it to episode eighty. Twenty wow. more, and we hit one hundred. That's a long way away. What should we do in yeah, twenty episodes? What, we what should we fun. do? Um, should we rip up more dinosaurs? No. Uh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> it's fine. 
it's not disrespect. An, it's not an unsummon, so it's fine. <laughs> um, Guys, thank you for watching this episode. Make sure to tune in every week. We do these podcast episodes every Wednesday. You can check us out on the podcast app. And <laughs> you're a douche. And we, of course, have our video up on YouTube in addition to all of our other content, mm. which you can check out. Make sure to like and comment down below. And, of course, subscribe. For all notifications, turn on that little bell. You'll see all of our stuff. Uh, we put out a lot of stuff, so you should definitely check we it do. out. We do. There's a bunch of stuff. Go find the stuff. The stuff Go is there. You want some stuff? stuff? We got it. We got your stuff. We got stuff. You want some stuff? Yeah. Hey, kid. You want to buy some stuff? <laughs> you want some stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. What is going we're, on? We're in sync today, man. I don't Guys, know. thank you again. We will see you in the next episode. My name is Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I about said Will. My name is Will on the first try with no hesitation. This has been it resolves. It resolves. It resolves. <laughs>